Hey all Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club, and today we're going to keep talking about Lindsay Gibson's Recovering from Emotionally Immature Parents. This is her second book. We previously covered uh, her Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. So um, super excited to be here with you guys today. This is some really heavy, good stuff. Um, you know, I've had friends tell me in the past that I need to take my own medicine <laughs> and I, I think that it's valid. I mean, I personally struggle with a lot of these things that I'm talking to you guys about. And, um, as I said in my previous video, I just want to acknowledge that I know this work is hard. This work is very hard. So I commend you on being here and taking these hard steps that you need to take for your own healing. Um, please do like and subscribe. It really does help us little YouTubers. And check out our website. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There you can take our free life balance questionnaire and submit it to us. You can also just fill out a contact form and we'll be in touch. Your first consult is always free and there's no obligation thereafter. So, okay, without further ado, um, we are talking about skills to manage interactions and invade, <clears throat> evade coercions or emotional takeovers, okay? Um, and so kind of like I did in our Gottman series, if you followed that one on romantic relationships, um, the and I had said, I think in my last video there, I had said, if you only watch one section of those 50 plus videos, you would want to watch the 10 other ways to betray your lover. Um, and so Gibson here talks about five effective skills for dealing with EI parents. So what I'm going to do is, um, they may be a little shorter than my other videos, but I'm going to take them one by one and so that you really get that time to digest and think about these things. Um, and hopefully that gives you the tools that you need in order to develop a better relationship. Um, maybe not necessarily with the EIP because they're, they're not they're not able to reciprocate, um, but with yourself, a better relationship with yourself and you, you understanding their own limitations will take you a really long way. It just takes some time. It doesn't happen overnight. So five effective skills for dealing with EI parents. To deal effectively with EI parents, there are five things you can do to make you immune to their emotional takeovers and distortions. One, step out of your rescuer role. Two, be slippery and sidestep. Three, lead the interaction. Four, create space for yourself. And five, stop them. One, step out of your rescuer role. Many adult children of EI parents feel they have to be their parents' rescuer or protector. These are the internalizing types I described in my previous book. Internalizers are perceptive, sensitive, and often let empathy for other people overrule their own preferences. They take everything to heart, assuming responsibility where there may be none. Internalizers try to jump in to solve an EIP's problem even before they ask for it. This over-responsibility is a form of codependency, whereby you try to feel lovable and valuable by taking on other people's problems as your own, often without being asked you end up more consumed with their lives than your own. So here, when Gibson talked about codependency, she quoted Melody Beatty's work from 1987 called Codependent No More. Um, and if you've been following along on all of my videos, um, I think the next book I'm going to do actually after this book by Lindsay Gibson is Melody Beatty's Codependent No More. Um, only because of all the people that I talk to, I'd say one out of two on average is codependent. Um, so if you're not the dependent um, looking to be rescued, you tend to be the rescuer. Um, and for a lot of us, the rescuing role, it, it gives you a sense of well-being. You're, you're very focused on their problems, their issues. Um, you know, your, your romantic relationship may not work out, and then you move to someone who's equally as dependent 
whether it's on substances, gambling, um, other addictions, people who really, really need you. And so that feeling of being needed is what gives you your sense of purpose, except who's looking out for you. Um, you don't have the energy or the ability to provide yourself the self-care that you need to because you're so busy rescuing that other person. And EIPs, they tend, you know, they're the externalizers, they're the dependents, they're the ones who need you. And as an internalizer, you automatically fall into that role of codependent or rescuer. Um, and I know when I was first starting my study, I said, you know, what the heck is a codependent? I'm, I'm not codependent. I don't know what that is. Um, but it, it, it really is when Gibson talks about being enmeshed and that relationship of being enmeshed, it is the, the, they control you. Their life is more important than anything else. And, um, and you kind of, you get lost, you get lost in their, their life, their problems, the things that they need, and you can't take care of yourself or the people who should be your dependents, like your own children who really do depend on you. Like the difference between an EIP's dependence on you and, and, a, and the true, like a child, is that the, the child needs you in a way that's, that's pure and they, they honestly need you and they can't survive without you. Whereas the EIP is an adult. They should be able to. Um, the fact that they're not, it, it speaks on them, not on you. And so a lot of what Gibson is teaching us in this work is how to kind of create some distance between the demands of the EIP and what they're requesting of you and what is healthy in terms of what you should be giving in a relationship. Um, especially if you grew up, and I think she talks about this in her work, you grew up in a household that's full of emotionally immature people. You don't necessarily know or you don't necessarily see other households and the way that they are. And so you don't have a frame of reference for what's healthy and what's unhealthy, what's okay to do for your family and what's not okay to do for your family. Um, and so that's why this is very important. Just like we've been talking about a lot of what Gibson has been telling us, like she's saying, step out of your rescuer role. Okay, easier said than done. There's a whole other book that's trying to teach you how to step out of your rescuer role. And that's why um, that we will cover that book because I think a lot of these things like be mindful. Okay, you can go study mindfulness for years and still not be mindful. <laughs> Step out of your rescuer role. Snap out of it. Okay, I, I can think about this thing in my mind, but that doesn't mean that I can do it. So I think be gentle with yourself on this journey. Um, if you feel very overwhelmed as you start seeing more of the problems, I think that's normal. Where you didn't see it before, you see it now, and that's normal. And it, it I think it'll get worse before it gets better. Um, so just have, just be patient with yourself. Don't try to watch all my videos all in one day. First off, that's just too much. <laughs> and second, you need time. Like you need time to digest this work, to digest, uh, Gibson's works, God, uh, Gottman's works, um, anything that we're covering. I mean, with the, with the exception of fiction, right? We cover Stranger in a Strange Land, which is fiction and just fun and kind of dumb. Like, sure, watch all of those videos all at the same time. But when we're talking about serious stuff, give yourself time to process, time to digest, get your journal, write your thoughts, go Google a feelings wheel and start identifying your own feelings. And when you feel like running away from your feelings, whether that be in a substance or a distraction or something else, give yourself a little bit of time and space and then come back, come back to it again and again and again. It will get easier, but it it's very hard emotional work. Um, and all of the topics that we're covering, like even identifying and understanding that your family is emotionally immature. Some of that is, it's just, it's very hard. Like you don't necessarily want to think about that and you love the people in your life. And so just don't feel alone. I mean, if you're watching, comment, right? I love to interact with you guys. You can interact with each other too. This is a community. Um, we also have a Facebook group which is somewhat limited. I know Facebook is not for the cool kids anymore, <laughs> but we have a Finding Yourself Book Club Facebook group. 
Um, yeah, and then, you know, if you have, uh, I'll keep saying this, but if you have health insurance, I recommend therapy. It is very, very helpful. Um, and you can always contact us, even if it's just for that first free consult, just to try it out and you don't want to continue after that. Perfectly fine too. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm rambling here, but the first step here is stepping out of your rescue or role. Um, and if this sounds way too simple or you're kind of stumped, like how the heck do I even do this? Rest assured, we will cover it when we talk about Melody Beauty's work, Codependent No More. Um, and then the other step, so be slippery and sidestep, which I think really deserves some explanation and I'll explain it in the next video. Lead the interaction, create space for yourself and stop them. So in the next four videos, I will go into each of these sections one by one. Um, thank you for being here with me on this journey. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help. And check out our website. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Take care, y'all. Have a good one.